everybody. And we're back again. And uh, anyway, welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, we've got uh, Dennis in the uh, green room ready to go. And uh, I see we've got a number of people out in the audience already. And I just want to say hi to Larry for coming along. Larry knows Dennis uh, from our uh, workshop we were down in. Tina, Wayne Wilton's out there. Uh, and Robert, uh, welcome Robert. And we've got Karen. Hi Karen, welcome. Uh, nice to see you come along and, and hope you enjoy the show. Uh, we've got Dennis, uh, he's got a wealth of information here for us. So, And we've got uh, Dave uh, Hutchison from uh, Vancouver Island also watching. Welcome Dave, thanks for coming along. What I wanted to do is just kind of give you a, a little, uh, a quick uh, video uh, that uh, I use for uh, our workshops just before we go down. It kind of gives you a little flavor of what Costa Rica's like and then Dennis is going to be right in right after that. So here we go uh, and uh, let's get going. wanted to get that little video showing you what um, uh, the um, property looks like at Crocodile Bay where Dennis uh, uh, works from, guides guides for uh, the Crocodile Bay Resort and uh, for all the photographers that uh, bring the workshop groups down. Dennis is the head guy uh, for Crocodile Bay where we go. He's with us and uh, he has a team of uh, uh, very knowledgeable, uh, great photographers uh, working with them. So without further ado, let me bring Dennis in and, uh, and give him a big welcome. Oh, hello, Dennis. Welcome. You're offset a little bit off the side. Uh, how you doing? Can you hear us now? Yes, I can hear you very well. Thank you good. for the invitation, Frank. Oh, good. Hey, listen, uh, you're just off the side a little bit. Can you move over a little bit? Uh, we can't see you all. No, the other way. The other way. Yeah, yeah. Oh, the other way. Other way. Other way. You're right off the screen. There we go. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. A little bit more. Hey, we want to see all of you. Yeah, there it is. Okay, man. Welcome. <laughs> So anyway, so this is uh, Dennis. Uh, he's uh, the head guide uh, and uh, for the photography workshops down in Crocodile Bay. And I just wanted to, to welcome him. Uh, he's an incredible uh, person and a great friend uh, that I've met over the years. And I uh, have worked with him. And uh, so anyway, Dennis, um, welcome to uh, Canada and welcome to the photography live streaming uh, out in uh, the world here now. Um, how are you doing? How's Costa Rica? Uh, very warm. <laughs> oh, and yeah, uh, so we are we are doing really well here. You know, um, things are little by little going back to not normal, but at least to coming. We're going back to work, and we are doing our regular things and we are we use a lot of time also to go out and explore the forest and get new pictures and new places it's been also very interesting so we are really really happy uh what what we have right now so 
yeah, yeah. Well, that's good. Like, I want the audience to kind of understand. Um, I see we've got a few people that uh, were in our workshop. Carol's here, and she's uh, glad that she's able to make it, Dennis. So she's watching you also, um, as well as Larry's out in the audience. We've got uh, Mike's out in the audience. And so uh, there's a couple other people that are still missing that. Uh, but anyway, uh, can you let us know, like, when we fly into to, uh, San Jose in Costa Rica, when we get off the plane there, the temperature is fairly warm, but when we come down to Puerto Jimenez, there's a big change in, in, in the, the, the climate. Can you explain that to us a little bit? Yeah, um, Costa Rica is, uh, is a very interesting place. You know, we are only between eight to 11 degrees north of the equator, but the the geographic, geographically talking about this uh, country is very irregular. So we have the central part of the, the country with different uh, mountain ridges. Uh, we have uh, San Jose is actually over 1500 uh, meters, almost 2000 meters. So the temperature there is a little bit more, it's, it's colder. Here in the coastlines, sea level, uh, it's pretty warm. Here is around 32, 35 centigrees in the dry season. And uh, the San Jose right now is maybe 17, 17, 15, and can drops down up down to 12 uh, sometimes uh, centigrees yeah, or yeah. Celsius. So it's uh, it's very very uh, uh, different changes. And so when people arrive to San Jose. And they, oh, this is nice here. And then the next day they take their plane um, down here to the coastlines and, oh, my God, this is so warm. Yeah, that's because the change is very, very um, dramatically and even a short time here. In the country. Mm -hmm. That's what we noticed when we got off the plane. It, it, it hits you right away that there is a drastic difference between San Jose and Puerto Jimenez on the coast. It's, it's nice. Um, it's, uh, the weather is just uh, lovely down there. Now, uh, Dennis, you know, uh, over the years, I've watched you grow as a photographer. Uh, when we first met, you were getting into photography. You and I are on the same Nikon guys. You know, we, we like the Nikon cameras. Um, now, in terms of when you go out uh, photographing, what, what lenses do you usually take with you? Um. You know, I I have a now I have a D uh, D eight hundred a D D eight fifty. That's what I have now, Nikon and uh, three hundred P. I believe it or not, I don't have a long, long, super long lenses. I try with some like uh, Sigma or other brands, but uh, by myself, I have this uh, three hundred, and I have an extender one point four three. Uh, extender that I sometimes I use it and will be a 420 uh, but yeah usually I have the da 50 is good for cropping it's you know it's a 42 megapixels camera if I'm not wrong with the numbers but uh, um, so usually uh, I crop sometimes that I need to because you know some of the animals here are not like the big mammals so many big mammals that you have a north here are smaller, so sometimes uh, you need to get or closer or just crop a little bit or have it a 600, but I don't have the long, long lenses, yeah, so yeah. yeah. Well, I, I know, I mean, you know, people have asked me too about uh, what lenses to, to take on these workshops. And I mean, I, I had the 600 and I've taken it down there. And you know, the places that you take us out, when we get out of the vehicles, the, the, the birds, the animals, they're all, everything is right within 50 feet of where we are so it's you don't need the big lenses uh to uh, most of the time you know it uh so yeah uh, it just depends you know it depends uh what is the quality level also what uh if you want to really feel the frame and you want to have you know the more uh, information and in your sensor of the of the subject um is all all um you know having a long lens uh frame is good, but also it doesn't give you the the much versatility. Uh, versatility. Well, um, you can, you know, with a zoom lens like 100 to 400, that is very popular. You you will get definitely more shots because you you know you can uh, shoot a monkey's clothes and then the bird approach, and you can get the bird 
But in terms of our superior quality, I think that 600 f4 of those prime lenses are, are, are a different, a different level. But for a general, uh, like a general terms about photography here, and to have as many pictures that you can uh, you can have in a, maybe in a week or uh, or so. So yeah. 100, 400, or 300 is, is is okay. You know, it all depends. But uh, but yeah, definitely, if you wanna get back with a nice nice collection of everything or anything, uh, those uh, smaller lenses are are better. Mm -hmm. The long lenses with the weight and carrying the tripod, and you know you can get in the forest as easier as easier than one hundred to four hundred. You know, just talking about those that are standard zoom lenses, but uh, uh, talking about small lenses, yeah, it's, it's it just depends. But yeah, yeah. Now when you are fun. Yeah, yeah. When you go out uh, shooting, Dennis, what what are your settings? What do you kind of set your camera uh, ready to go when you come out of the vehicle? You ready to go shoot what are what are your settings how do you set your camera up okay i have a, a system that um i use uh, automatic iso and manual because what happened is, this is what happens here in the rainforest uh we don't have as much light available sometimes and also the light can change not the light would change that quick but the the where the animals is located let's say for example like you see this beautiful bird called a truck. That is, uh, we have different species here. That is in the shape. And at one point, and another hawk arrived, but it's in this in the sun. So that quick uh, reaction is you, know, you gotta be really quick to react to see which ISO you need. So that's why I I set up my camera in M and have automatic ISO. And then what I only see is the shutter speed. And I put the f stop at the opens my lens have it. So let's say my lens is an f4, the 300. So I always leave it in f4 because I need as much light as possible. Because again, a lot of the animals in the rainforest will be in a little dark, in a lot of dark areas. So you need as much light as possible. And but having like that, I only see is the shutter speed because the auto automatic the ISO is automatic and the f stop is in the widest open, right? Yeah. So that, that what you only see is your shutter speed. So I just try to not go lower than uh, 350 because I know that will be risky in my pictures. Mm -hmm. So I always try to be over 300 is one of the 350. So that's my number. The numbers can change depending on the lenses. Let's say you have a 600, so minimum would be like 600 or 700, right? So you can start shooting like over 700 and your long lenses in my case would be over 350. I'm really happy with them five, one of 500, one of 600 and so. So that's what I, what I start. If I get like a multiple shots already with those settings and I see, I think I got some of them, but maybe my ISO is pretty high, right? So what I do next is, okay, I will risk myself and I will put the shutter speed lower and lower and lower and then automatically the ISO will go lower and lower too. Remember it's automatically and yeah. it's all by formula. So automatically will go down and then uh, that how quickly I can get multiple shots with different ISOs. Yeah. So in that way, you know, sometimes some, some it depends on the behavior of the animals. So an animal give you time, so an animal they don't give you time. So yeah. in this case about having automatic ISO, you'll be more worried about uh, composition and to get the shot and not much about messing around with ISOs or other other type of things when yeah. you don't have time yeah well that's where you know like I say when we when we do the workshops that's where you really you really shine for for the uh, the people that are, are there because you understand the movement of the animals how they react uh, you understand the, the light, you understand the camera settings. You know, a lot of times people will go to certain areas and they'll have a guide, but the guide's not a photographer. You're a photographer, so you understand what a photographer is looking for. So that's that's such a bonus, you know, when, when people come. Uh, and and uh, it's just nice to see that. And, 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 and again, a lot of people don't use the auto ISO, but they don't realize, like, things change so quickly in the jungle it's uh, you could be outside it's full sun and you step inside and it's it's dark you know you're covered with those trees mm -hmm. and uh, so it's it's just nice to to be you know like we set them up 
when they come out of the vehicle, they're ready to shoot and, and uh, get their photos, you know. So all they have to do is basically make sure they're focusing properly, you know, in there, so. You know, also there are some other ways that help the camera a little bit with more of that to be more accurate, accurate with the with exposure because an icon, at least an icon, you can change the exposure value uh, in the same way, like other, other modes. So let's say, for example, you shoot it again in the sky and this option, uh, um, and the way I do shoot, it will cool be I shoot a matrix, so that will be I will taking care of the highlights, so that I don't I don't go overexposed, right? The highlights, mm -hmm. so I will protect them. So in that, in that way, also I have to just make sure that the exposure will be right and what I want it to. So every time that you finish one session of uh, let's say like uh, this uh, this subject, you gotta put it back normal because sometimes you don't know what is going to be next so you don't want to shoot and the shutter speed over one of three thousand let's say because that will stay there right yeah. so if you move to the next subject and maybe the next subject is in the shape and you don't want to shoot at one of the three thousand so you gotta go back to the normal like the departure start the starting point so that would be 350 in my case mm -hmm. so that's why we always try to tell our guests our people that always go back to the standard setting to start it from there and not forget it because if you forget it you also will ruin the photos That's maybe right. you will not see them because yeah. at the end will be still just iso yeah. uh, because it's automatic iso i mean yeah the noise because uh you know you should like in the shade one or three thousand and we may give you like uh, so much but that's why it's good that you limited the iso uh you know no more than four thousand five thousand and that way, you know, you see like the picture is black, you will know that it's because the ISO is, uh, 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 I mean, the shutter speed is too high. Yeah, yeah, no, for sure. Now, Dennis, I know you, you travel and, and uh, you've gone into uh, the cloud forest, which uh, we've, we've also uh, taken a group in there. Now, when you travel, what, what, kind, what gear do you take with you? What do you take with you? Uh, I think there you can have different lenses. You can have a smaller one, but again, as, as I only have the longest is 420 for myself. I'm good with that. So I don't even need to put the, the 1.4 because uh, some of the places they have feeder, like a bird, like a hummingbird feeders. So you will be really close to the bird, so maybe like uh, three, two meters away. Actually, that's where the long lenses, they don't work uh, as well because you're too close sometimes. Uh, but also, you know, the part of the of this uh, trip and the cloud forest is to go and see one of the most amazing birds in the world, the Quetzal, Responsible Quetzal, yeah. which is only in, in Central America, and that is a beautiful bird of the of the highlands. So that's like that. There you will you will need uh, the long lenses. Yeah. So I think that a good mix between one short medium lens and one long lens is the key to mm -hmm. get the best. Uh, if, but if you tell me what, what only one lens, I think would be uh, maybe just like a 400, like some something I get to 400. Yeah. It's like the, the list for everything, you know? You can get uh, close enough to, to get a shot, it would be a 400. Yeah. Or even 500 too. Yeah, 500 two to 500. Yeah, two to 500 is uh, very yeah, popular. Exactly. Yeah. Now, yeah. Do, you, do you take, uh, do you use your tripod a lot, you know, when you go out or? Or you're more more uh, handheld. I uh, no no I really like it. The only thing is you you need to you learn you need to find the love for the tripod. That's what I I always tell people. You know tripod make you definitely uh, better in photography, and uh, but the, it's also depend on the areas where you're in. You know you are and around open places with uh, with you can maneuver really easy. It's fine if you are inside the forest hiking with a long or big tripod. Uh, sometimes it becomes really, really hard. But when you set it, you know, when you can put the tripod inside the forest, it's a big, big benefit because you can really see the difference when you use it and when you're not. Yeah, so yeah. I'm not a person that personally use a lot of tripods. And that's, um, and that's uh, again, it's just because I don't have a long, long lens. And I've been more like, a, when I do my own photography, more like a hiking in the forest. And even like that the little 300, because the PF is a small one. Even with that small lens and with that body, after hiking five hours, 
you, you know, you can really feel the weight. You know, yeah, you know, why. every every ounce. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, but by 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 my photography is a little bit different. You know, I I do more go inside to try to see mammals and things like that. So a lot of people with the six hundred lenses or big lenses is uh, um, I would say like almost 80, 85, 90 percent will be a bird photography. Yeah. But if you want to include like uh, other type or, or monkeys or mammals, and that will be a different uh, adventures, and mm -hmm. then you will need something also in between or smaller. So it just depends what you're looking for too. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, and I know a lot, a lot of people do have the big lenses, but you know, it, it's uh, as you get older, it get it gets heavy carrying it. You know, I mean, and and it's fortunate when people do come down to Costa Rica, down to Crocodile Bay there that. You know, they have the vehicle, so you can basically, it's a step out of the vehicle. You don't have to go very far, you know, to, to get your shots, luckily. But if you have to carry that for any distance, like you say, if you're hiking somewhere with it, that's a brute. I mean, you're, you know, you get, it's, it's 100 pounds with tripods and everything, you know, it's, <laughs> and it's the heat, everything, you know, it, uh, you know, comes down. So you really got to pick your choices, you know, uh, when you have that. No, that that's why at Crocodile Bay we you know we had a we have a, a itinerary where the people don't have to walk much. Actually, we always tell the people the only day that you will hike a lot is the first day when you walk the grounds of the hotel. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the yeah. rest of the, the the rest of the time we are really nearby the cars or the places. So I think everyone likes that too, being cold. You know, even mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't mean that you will not see you will not see things. You know. Just we just go to different areas where um, the, the the choices and the options are there. The Osa Peninsula has so many 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 opportunities between birds, you want, uh, reptiles, and mammals and and insects. So it's it's full of things to shoot. So I always tell people, you know, when if you come for a week, don't judge the the amount of a species by the day. Just do it at the end of the trip. And I I'm pretty guarantee. Like at the end of the trip, you will forget what you shoot the first day, yeah. Because that's what it is here. Yeah. Even in the one day, when you start the one day, you start to shoot this bird, this other monkey, and then you think you're getting you're getting down the list of things that you're shooting. And at the end of the day, they everyone is trying to. They always ask me, "Oh, what is the name of what is the bird that we saw in the beginning? What is the name of this?" It's always yeah. hard to keep up with the. Yeah. yeah, I know. I ask you that question a lot of times too. Is what was this? What was that? You know. So yeah, yeah. I mean, it it is. You know, and people don't realize like just the property alone, they could stay on that property and shoot just about every type of bird and, and animal that's uh, around there. It's it's such a a great place to go and. And then they can also go out uh, uh, out to uh, in, in the in the Gulf there uh, for whale watching. And then when you go across over to uh, Corcovado Park there, it, um, I think you were there just recently, weren't you, at the park, the national park there? Yeah. And uh, now there are uh, options that we didn't have before from Puerto Jimenez, from the town that we are located. That there are boat services that can go in an hour, one hour and a half. You can be and the, the most important station in the park and the place where you have more chances to see other type of wildlife like that you don't usually see as easier um, is in that place. For example, uh, sometimes you can see a paper or a red bracket deer or peccaries and any eaters. Uh, those type of animals, uh, there could be anywhere in the peninsula. But for some reasons um, in that area, you will have more chances. So mm -hmm. it's a very, very intense, very intense place. Yeah, it's a, the only thing is the boat ride is one hour and a half. It's very choppy in some of the areas and depend on the, of the swell of the tide. And also the landing, I mean, the arriving uh, to the beach is uh, you got to get out in the water a little bit. Not too rough, but, you know, there are mm -hmm. things that you have to concern. The hike is really easy. It's all like flat trails. But again, inside the forest, the long lenses are not good because you're more focused in uh, mammals. I mean, yeah. you can get to see birds that you will probably miss the long lenses. But, but in general, it's, we, what we're looking for more is the like a bigger mammals. Yeah, so mm -hmm. it's very, very interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, that's cool to go across, uh, you know, and, and a boat ride is really nice going across the, the gulf there to uh, to the park there. So, 
it's uh, it's really neat. Now, what I'm going to do, Dennis, is we've got a, a few uh, of your photos, and uh, I'm, I'm going to bring them up here. I just got uh, there's a couple of people that uh, helped me with the show, and that's it's Rob, and and Mike just he was in the green room. He just left, and uh, Wayne. Uh, I'm going to put the link in the in the chat here, and if they want to kind of. Uh, come into the chat we'll we'll get the group of us watching and talking about your photos coming up here so okay mike's back in here i'm gonna stick him into number two place um and uh so rob wayne are you guys out there click on the link and and come on in and and uh we'll we'll start uh looking at some of these photos here to so Hello. there, there, there is Hello, our, our mic. Hello, Rob, Karen, Carol. Nice to see you. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay. So. Hey, Dennis. How's everything? Good. How are you? Yeah. Oh my God! Look at look at you, huh? <laughs> yeah, he's need, we've, we, need... we've set him up with the new camera and everything. You read just just for tonight, Dennis, so we can get everybody just in for here. Tonight. Yeah. You yes. know what you really need. You really need the tropical sun to get a little bit of tan, you know? Yeah. I know. Yeah. Yeah, I got that white look. I know. <laughs> and, I know. And, and, yeah, and here we got Wayne. This is Wayne. Uh, you haven't met Wayne, but he's another local photographer here. So, it, uh, uh, welcome. And I don't know. Hey, if, Wayne. Nice to see you. Yeah. If Larry, are you around there? If Larry, if you want to click on the link, you're welcome to come in too. And, and uh, it would actually be nice to see see Larry in here um, where did he go is, is he out there oh let's see we got oh there's Robert okay Robert beat him to it so we got Robert in here for now let me just bring Robert in the four spots so we got four I can bring four people on to, to the chat here so you got Robert wow. Wayne and Mike so Dennis yeah go ahead Mike I was gonna say my sunburned legs are all better now Remember, I oh, got really? that severe sunburn on my legs out on the yeah, boat. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, hey, hey, Robert, I'm going to just kick you out for a second. I got to bring Larry in if you just for a sec. Okay, so hold on, hold on. Okay, Larry, I'm just going to bring you in here because it. Uh, okay, number four. There's Larry. Okay, so I brought Larry in because it. Uh, he was part of the the workshop, so it's nice to to see have him along here and and uh, look look at these photos now. I have a few of these photos here, um, Dennis, that uh, kind of set up uh, just the scenery that we will see when we're going through. So uh, this was, you know, the very first uh, kind of on the road, get the people the feeling what what the jungle is going to look like, how dense and everything is, you know, like as soon as you step off the road, it's ah. it's uh, it's like this, you know, so um, and, you know, with the vines, the trees, it's, it's solid and you can see why you choose the auto ISO and, and so do I. And when we go into the jungle is, is you cannot have time to be changing settings uh, when, when a, an opportunity appears for uh, 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 that, uh, yeah, so in there. So, I mean, just, uh, yeah, so I'm just, uh, there's another person I want to come in. Dave, uh, just give us a sec. I can only have four people in here at a time. So we'll get you in here uh, shortly. So to, uh, talk, so. Lots of people want to talk, Dennis. So let just let me go on here. That's good. And uh, oh, that's so, good. can you tell us about this? Is a, this a little area? This is you've been by here a number of times, and this little landscape shot that you've taken here. So, yeah, this is uh, well different pictures. The ones before uh, they were uh, actually it's a very inter interesting place because it's a mangrove. Yeah, I think it's just on, yeah, yeah. The, the one before this is a different one yeah that one there yeah yeah okay this one isn't yeah that one the one before this one yep no no the one that one yeah that one okay yeah it's about 10 second delay we got about 10 second delays so yeah this is uh again this is a, a mangrove that is connecting with the with the primary forest mm -hmm. and you can see some of the vegetation that in the bottom is the flooding part when it's high tide. So some of the salt water getting in there. And so actually those plants can resist some of the salt water. A yeah, little bit, yeah. not as much as a real mangrove, but uh, they are not really true mangrove, but they are really nearby by the 
salt water a little bit too. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, the the, the Osa Peninsula has many many different ecosystems where every ecosystem holds different species. So it's yeah, species of birds. Mm -hmm. For example, in this one here in this area, we have one bird called the yellow bill cotinga, which is very very uh, it's actually in danger of extinction, and there are only a few groups left. <laughs> So people from all over the world that are interested in that species, they have to come to this area, exactly here where that little area yeah. on the forest is, to try to see that yellow bill cotinga. I yeah. have one picture on Instagram there, it's white, white like a snow, mm -hmm. and only have a little bit of the yellow bill. But it's always purchased really far away. The other day I took a client, and he had to have a 800 lens with a wow. 1.4. He said to try to get it, and it still wasn't small in the sense. Yeah, it's just a yeah. tiny little thing. Yeah, it's almost, yeah, not enough. But yeah, so I just wanted to show a little bit of uh, some of the scenery, you know, that we have, you know, for Costa Rica. Uh, you know, when we travel, uh, people can see the weather is just uh, is really nice. You know, we were in October, uh, and I still like October uh, weather. Uh, the days are like this, full sun. Dinner time, we get a big downpour of rain. Come morning, it's bone dry, beautiful weather again. You know, it just you just can't beat it. You know, and then things are so green and lush. You know, so that one, and then the this Amber here, yeah, yeah, and this here, and we traveled this road quite a bit. Beautiful sun sunset here that you were uh, getting <clears throat> here. So sunrise, yeah, and then and the rainbow. Now, I'm not sure where, I don't think this is a Serpe, is it? This particular one. No, that's the, that's the Rincon River. That's the river that where we go to see these little birds. Actually, all these, uh, the last photos, they it's because I went to a tour to just see that bird. In front. Mm -hmm. So we have to be at the bridge around 5, yeah, 5.20, 5.30 to see the, the bird in the first uh, hours of light. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. And, yeah, and here's another beautiful not lots of color lots of colors to uh to see down there yeah the the landscapings here are, are very interesting are all with those type of green mm -hmm. and you only have a few a few minutes and then really early morning or afternoon like to really get to your picture but the sun goes down really quick that you have to you know you know work in your shot way before that happened because as soon as you start to see color the quickly the sun goes down yeah yeah that's right it. yeah yeah now larry do you have any questions there at, uh to to dennis while uh you're sitting here or... I, I apologize because i can barely hear things and see things so not not right now I okay apologize. you can okay so it's all right yeah wayne have you got any questions so far why what no, not right now. Uh, you got a lot of uh, interference. It's hard to hear anybody. Okay, so yeah, it's 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 uh, yeah. So okay, no worries. We'll move on then. We... Okay, so here's another little uh, scenery. I I love the greens. It's just uh, there's so many shades of green when you get to to Costa Rica there. So, but, uh, and this is going across the, the Gulf and, uh, when we were out whale watching. This is part of uh, the, the Gulf and, and all the palm trees and, and what have you. So, it, uh, yeah, it's uh, very cool. Another one, you know, in the Gulf. Lots of boating, lots like of swimming. And now we get into your it photos. What was that, Dennis? No, the name of the Gulf is called Gulf of Dulce. Gulf of Dulce, yes, yeah. Now here we've got uh, your first photo here. We've got uh, somebody looking at, looking back at us, and and uh, yeah. So this is a very very special uh, viper, very very elusive snake that actually a a, a, a guy found it, a friend of mine found it in the forest, mm -hmm. and he called us to go and see it. So. Besides me, a lot of people went to, for a week to see this bird. Uh, sorry, this is fake. Yeah. This is called a ice light, uh, sorry, black headed bushmaster. Black headed, you see the, 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 the top of the head is black. 
Mm -hmm. Bushmaster, black and Bushmaster. Okay. So these okay. snakes yeah. is only found in the primary, very, very pristine primary forest. It's really, really hard to see them outside there. Yeah. And that's one of the few vipers in the world that actually lay eggs. Usually, oh, they lay eggs. Like those. Yeah, this one is a the peri. They, they lay eggs. So this snake uh, live like in holes, like a little. They burrow holes. Yeah. And they lay eggs. And they, they oh, take okay. a, yeah. it's a little bit different, yeah. Yeah. And yeah. this uh, snake could be, could be almost like three meters hmm. tall. Okay. Yeah. So, so okay. it's very, it's very, very special. That yeah. I only seen twice. Yeah. Yeah. It is. It is. I've never. I haven't seen it. You know. So it. Uh, there's Roberts back up here now. It. Uh, he's watching. But yeah, it's a cool cool photo and I, and I like the the idea I mean it's 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 sharp right from its nose part way back and, a, and it just kind of drops off with a nice green background to it just uh, very nice nicely done and that's very important also for anyone that shoots at wildlife yeah it just to be I try to be as much as possible at high level okay someone's got their speaker still on their YouTube channel if you mute, mute the mic, you could, it's getting feedback in here. Robert, do you have your speaker on for the channel? Or oh, okay, so it's no, it's, it's turned off. Oh, okay, it was okay. Um, okay, the next one here is we've got. Uh, this is this is probably one of my favorite birds to photograph. Yeah, this is called a fiery bill aracari. This is related to chickens. You can see their bills. Yeah, these birds are omnivorous. They eat everything, and this one is endemic only from the Central Pacific, south of Costa Rica, and just on the other side of the Panama borders. This is very, very special, and uh, we actually wor are working with this species at my grandparents' place that they have a feeder. Mm -hmm. So this one is actually from a feeder. They okay. usually are up in the trees, and it's really hard to get good backgrounds in this forest. So a lot of the photos that you see like this, very close, a lot of them um, are from Peters. Okay. And this one is also the same way. Yeah. I do a lot of wildlife photography, but at this species, I didn't have a really cool, like, cool shot like that. So this one is, is yeah. from one of them. I know all all my shots of this too. Is it's, it's up in the tree. It's a long ways away, and you know different background. So it's nice to see, you know, able to get a, a nice clean shot of this bird because it's, it's so beautiful and everything is, is I mean I'm looking at it on my screen here all the feathers and everything is just it's all tack sharp do you happen to remember what kind of settings you might have been using on this one Dennis no but I, I'm pretty sure that I didn't shoot it over a thousand I think probably was around one or five hundred because it was closed and it was set, sitting there so when it's like that I don't shoot that fast to that try to get that guy so low yeah, uh, Rob. Why you don't like? Why do you don't like uh, aromatic ISO? There you go. Oh, I don't like it because uh, I can't be very creative with the light. I have always sense exposure because the auto ISO balance the exposure, and uh, plus when the birds are in the fly, and they move or change direction and they are against the sky, I got only silhouette. So <clears throat> that's why I don't like. Rob's a wedding you, photographer you a, also. What, Sorry? what uh, camera? Do you use a Canon or Nikon? No, no, I'm a hardcore Nikon shooter. Oh, I see. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nikon. I'm, no, I'm shooting not, Nikon. It, it's just getting used to. But also, an aperture probably is really good too, but uh, it's just getting used to because, yeah. again, when you shoot the sky, you right away you have to think that you will need to be overexposed right away. Otherwise, uh, um, you know, you can also help the 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 settings with uh, the how do you say that um, when you put like a, the the matrix mode uh, between matrix, you can put in a spot and in the mm -hmm. spot measuring night, you can uh, just get more accurate of the light around the subject too. Yeah, with the spot yeah. measuring. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I know, but I'm so used shooting manual so when the light change i i change everything manually uh, automatically yeah, so yeah uh, i don't use uh auto iso but i do have a question because you mentioned you have uh, 300 mil lens 
and I didn't hear uh, which lens is it. Is it a 300 Nikon 28 lens or f4? Yeah, I have uh, two Nikons. I have one uh, D7200 that I don't use it much, and I have the one D850 with a 300 f4 plus 1.4 TC. So he's yeah. got the PF, Robert. He's got the 300 PF. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. so, yeah. You got it. Yeah. Now we have got a question here uh, from Karen. Uh, are these birds endangered, Dennis? Uh, no, they are not endangered. Uh, what happened is the the rainforest that we have in Costa Rica is in the Pacific is very special because uh, it doesn't extend that long. Actually, if you go from Panama to Mexico, this is the biggest piece of rainforest in the Pacific. So what happened is for many, many, many years, it's been, it's been isolated from the Caribbean side where we also have rainforest. So it becomes like a different species. So it's just like a, in a small area. But here, you, it's, it's, you know, it's not a super rare to see. But what has happened here for most of the birds in the wild, they're really hard to get pictures uh, or clear stocks. So that's why it is good, like uh, at least some places like those that are, they are feeders and they can arrive. So you can see the beauty of their uh, of full, you know, like a full resolution, like in this mm -hmm. case. So yeah, that's a, yeah. that's a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. But they, they, are, they are not dangerous. Yeah. Now, I know you mentioned your, your, is it your, your parents or your grandparents have uh, just uh, put together uh, uh, an area where people can go and photograph some of the birds that come through the property. Is that completed now, Dennis? Yeah, well, it's, a, it's, a, it's in a process. So, um, and this place, and also it's been changing, but depending on the month. So right now in the dry season, a lot of birds are in breeding time. So they're also making their nests. Okay. And so they kind of like go away, but also there are more food searches in the dry season for the birds than in the rainy season. And the rainy season, when you have so much water, a lot of this water or rain, they, what they happen is it drops the fruits down. So it will be a little bit less, uh, it's harder for them to find fruits. So okay. That's why, you know, when you have like those feeders, like for yeah. example, October, if you want the time that you like, it will be really good for the feeder. And I'm pretty sure those birds will be there for you. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, very interesting. Okay. And then this one here is uh, we photographed this while we were there too, this little. Uh, Poison dart frog, yeah. Yeah, those are very, very famous. Uh, I mean, in general, uh, poison dart frog. I think the most popular is the one from Colombia called a uh, golden poison dart frog. Mm -hmm. Where actually uh, one, you know, uh, the toxins of one frog is enough to kill almost six people. And these ones that we have in the country are not as deadly as those, but it's still they have some toxins that if you yeah. if you touch them and then after you forget and you touch your eyes or your mouth you might have some reagent uh, uh allergies or reaction mm -hmm. yeah and this one is in this particular one is called a granular poison dart frog granular because if you see in the skin it have a little pumpy skin so you can see their texture yeah and this one is also endemic from this rainforest and pacific side it's like the same bird as before it's from the same distribution of these birds mm -hmm. oh. Oh, somebody's sneezing away there um yeah no and then people don't realize like this is not a big big frog when you look at it on a screen like this it looks like it's a fair size this is not much bigger than the, your most Ooh, average bro. thumbnail it's yeah big. yeah tiny very, tiny tiny little tiny. guys yeah so to, um, and then again you know when you're shooting these at uh, the light is very very difficult to uh, to shoot with tripods are handy where you got a little bit of a telephoto lens to to get these happening in here so to, this is a natural light oh I yeah go ahead that. yeah yeah no, this is a natural light and something that uh, you know and with the macro lenses because the depth of field is so narrow, so you have to shoot always like a f8, f11, f12. I usually shoot it between a f11 and f14. Yeah. Um, I don't do it, I do it a more narrow than that because I can see all the dots and my mm -hmm. mm -hmm. <laughs> Take that away after that. But yeah. uh, what happened is uh, because the the uh, sometimes it 
you know, I wanted to have this one in the natural light. So I picked the 300 PF. It can focus really close. So this is not with a macro lens. This is with the 300 PF lenses. So yeah. you can see how just the, the you know the first part is very nice and sharp almost the whole frog. Yeah. And then everything and the background is very blurry. So sometimes with a small subject like that, it's really really nice or interesting to shoot with long lenses just because you can get the you know you can uh, get more area of focus and mm -hmm. and blur the background. So it's it's it's, it's nice too. Yeah. Yeah. And oh, especially, yeah. especially because you, especially because you can shoot a, a four, yeah. So you still have the, you know, enough depth of field to have the whole frog and blur the background and yeah. be f four, yeah. And that way, you know, the ISO is not super high. Yeah. Because if you try to do that a natural light with a like, macro lens, it will not be a good idea. Yeah. And these are again, it's just it's nice because they're kind of complementary colors to it. Just the colors kind of really blend in with the frog and the, and the green. It's just it's it's a nice combination. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And then this one here, this 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 was our, our morning alarm clock. <laughs> yeah, there we go. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> These are the uh, mantlet holler monkeys. These guys are very, very cool. They're really hard to photograph uh, because they're black colors and they usually are up in the trees against the sky, in front of the sky. So. <laughs> It's uh, really a challenge, and uh, once in a while they get like a high level or low, so you have a different background, but you know, you can get a, a better result uh, yeah. with them. But in this case, uh, it was eating uh, fake leaves, so it was very, very close. Actually, to have this shot, I have to line down in the ground because with the, my 300 PF to mm -hmm. try to at least just get the face because it was too close for me. Yeah, yeah. yeah so it was very yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, and I just and I just want to emphasize, like you know, like you were saying, like these guys up in the trees, it is so dark you can hardly see them. Uh, but I mean, I don't know how you manage to see them, but you can see that see them half a mile down the road. You say, okay, they're up in the trees over there, and we look at them, we can't see a damn thing. But they are dark, and when you look up, it, it's dark. You're shooting in, the, in there to, to, to get a decent shot of these. It, it is. You really have to work at it, you know, with it, and know your, your settings and, and have, your, have that camera setting ready to go because, it, uh, again, auto, auto ISO a lot of times, is, it's only savior on some of these because these guys move around pretty quickly. Yeah, no, it's, uh, the rainforest is always giving you challenge and they photography aspect so what it also make you really uh, you know that every time you improve and improve because you always see challenge every day and every time you know especially with this uh, type of situation where the monkeys are up in the sky and sometimes it's easier just to say you know it's a bad background just don't shoot it don't mm -hmm. shoot it yeah but yeah. you know it's not about sometimes just about that it's just how you can really learn to get a little bit of, the, of a better result from a very terrible shot. So that's how you start to learn more and more. And then, mm -hmm. and of course, if it's your first time seeing a monkey or an animal, yeah, you gotta start from something, right? So, yeah. and, and after yeah. that, you just improve and improve your shooting. Yeah. Your yeah. Dave was asking you uh, uh, if you shoot videos. I am just trying to, what, you know, I would love to have a, a mirrorless camera to shoot videos, um, you know, still I don't have one. I have one Leica, 100, uh, it's, 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 it's a Leica, I forgot, it's like a 24 to 500. The shoot really nice videos, it's a still electronic uh, viewfinder. Yeah. I mean, it's, um, it's decent to take videos through, but with my long lenses, like uh, with the Nikons, I don't do it because with the DA50, you have to shoot videos through the screen and it's terrible. Yeah, Focus is really. I know, and it really so sucks. I, yeah, yeah. It's 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 a toughie. Yeah, yeah, but true. you do. You, I mean, uh, just to uh, uh, go on that, Dave. He does shoot uh, video. I mean, Dennis is great. He really knows how to shoot uh, video with the iPhones. Uh, he does a lot of teaching with for people how to get some proper motion with that slow motion. Uh, you know, so it, it still shoots, but. You know, some of these uh, with the the Nikon's, it's a little bit more challenging to shoot the shoot the videos. So, and this one here is is you were just so fortunate to get this shot. Yeah, that's uh, um, I went to that park 
that I told you in the main station for four nights <coughs> and five dates. And uh, I just choose one day to do something different. What I decided is just to go and sit in the trail and just wait for anything that goes through uh, around the trail. And after three hours that I was sitting in one location that was far away from the station where nobody were around, so after like uh, three hours waiting in the trail, sitting nobody with nobody, so I didn't have to talk with anybody. And this uh, puma came out from the forest and took the took the trail, continuing, which was very very interesting to see that. And I'm very excited. I thought it was a jaguar, but it was this beautiful yeah. puma. Yeah. But as he was moving away, I couldn't see his face. So that's why before he was taken off. So I just called him and hey Puma, and then Puma just started to see me with through those leaves. So it was very, very cool. Very just cool. check, yeah. It looks like it's a quite a young one too, isn't it? Is it young or is it older one? Yeah, or? yeah, it's a, it's, yeah, it's a young one. Yeah, yeah. The, the Pumas in and and these areas they don't get as big as your country. Mm -hmm. You know, you get more and more food for them in north, and they get pretty bigger there. The cougars. Yeah. Here they're they're medium size. They're not too big, but they're mm -hmm. still still very hard to find they're not easy to spot them yeah no i mean the other and here, and, and yeah, sorry in this picture you gotta be careful because that's something else you know i use a uh, single point or focusing i don't use like a uh, multiple ones yeah because uh especially like that's this type of shots inside the rainforest is quite, quite risky because you know so many things in the way if I have something bigger that uh, a central, like a central point, mm -hmm. I probably will focus on those leaves. You see? Yeah. So you need like something as small. Yeah. Some, sometimes I do like uh, the nine little points around the the cent, uh, central point. Yeah. And Nikon, and that's uh, help you a lot. But yeah. uh, but usually single point is 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 good. Well, that's that's, that's the thing small. because in here, like if you're looking at it, I can see there's a layer of leaves in front. So if you're doing any sort of multiple focus points on there. It'll probably pick the closest one for you, and then the the puma's going to be out of out of uh, focus. So, you know, the single single point focusing is definitely the way to go on that for sure. You know, so mm -hmm. it's, uh, yeah, yeah. And this is this is the bird everybody comes to Costa Rica to get. Um, and this is the Quetzal, and and this is up in the cloud forest. This is not down in Puerto Jimenez where Dennis lives and, and works. This is up in the mountains, and, and I think elevation-wise, Dennis, what, 8,000 feet, somewhere around there? Um, yeah, it's around 2,000 meters. Um, That's like a 6,000, 7,000 feet. Feet, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, this is, a, this is a bird. Actually, that is happening soon. Uh, in the couple of next, next month, uh, they will use this nest you see, bringing an avocado uh, fruit yeah. to feed his babies, and uh, and the tree that's the nest. So it's uh, bringing food back, and that nest is interesting. They have a nice project where they are uh, trying to put this nest in these areas, and they, you know, they are natural nests, but they are put it there in purpose with a nice uh, background, <coughs> made it for photography. Yeah. So you actually can uh, go in these places and have a, and you know and do a tour of photography just to do that so that's what we usually do in the next month because they don't nest the whole year of course mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so that only happened in the next month yeah yeah i know when we were in there with with our group there we went up to um the cloud force there and uh, uh we had another guide another a friend of yours uh, michael uh that took us up mm -hmm. there and we were up on on a mountainside shooting down and there was a valley across the other side, probably about oh, quite a ways away. So it gave us a nice, bat blo nice bokeh for a background. Uh, but these guys were just in the trees. They weren't uh, nesting at that time. I guess they were just kind of they come out of the the forest in the morning, get their fruits, and then they kind of go back in again. So, but this is this is the way to get it is with that long tail. You got that tail motion in there. It's just um, again, it's just being actually, patient. I, actually. Actually, you have to shoot that vertical. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, because you, yeah. you don't have the room in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's quite something. It, it was not far. It was it was quite far for yeah. my for my lens. So yeah. yeah. 
And it's hard to see. I don't know if people can see it on on the screen, but the the, the feathers are very very iridescent. The red, the greens, they're just uh, they got so much shine to them that uh, it's it it really is is something to uh, to photograph. I mean these these are just incredible. And it is a little avocado that they it uh, that they he's bringing back into the nest there. Yeah, they also can eat lizards and different things too. Oh, do they? Okay, that I didn't know. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a red bracket deer. This is something really, really special from this forest. Uh, that one was a couple, maybe like a year ago. This uh, this is a female that was uh, in the same day that I saw that puma, mm -hmm. that I saw that uh, female deer. That they are inside the forest, solitary animals, very, very silent uh, when they move down very very interesting animals and um beautiful looking i really love those deer i know you're used to deer it's like they look yeah like yeah no we do have deer here deer. for sure yeah yeah this, this for, is very me, it's a, it's a different me, looking deer for us yeah. yeah yeah i know <laughs> but yeah this is called a red bracket deer it's different yeah. it's very special yeah, yeah very very cool and something really something really hard that you will not really find here very commonly is that when you go inside the forest is to have at least like a little bit of clean backgrounds that's mm -hmm. really really hard to move so we always always tell our people move around move around just move a little bit to the right or left back uh it can give you a totally different uh, you know background especially if the subject is the small in this case a big animal uh yeah. so i didn't have much to move around but at least you know, in the beginning when I started, you see the black branches behind. Mm -hmm. the, they were like uh, next to the nose, so I yeah. just move a little bit to the uh, to the to the left. I mean, sorry, right, to keep those away. And mm -hmm. that's what you have to do. Sometimes the problem is when people get too excited when they see a bird or any animal that you just want to shoot, 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 and you don't see the backgrounds. Yeah. And yeah. then eventually, when you the, the animals move away. You probably have like a 60 pictures and all the 60 pictures have the same background that's right when you could just move like a, maybe one meter to the right yeah. or left and tell have a totally different backgrounds and then yeah. you don't have to spend like a two hours trying to get that range away with a mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. light light. <laughs> yeah well you know I, I agree with you there dennis you know it, and and i think what it comes to some sometimes from some of these photos is 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 it's it's, it's ex experience for the photographer where they'll take their photos and then they'll be critiqued and some, somebody will let them know, hey, you know, did you not notice that thing sticking out of its head or, or out of its mouth or something? Um, it's just, it's plain experience. You know, when you see it is, is to, to look at the backgrounds right away if you have time. Take your shot, but start exploring the backgrounds, what they look like, you know, and, and uh, try to get the clean, clean photos for, for your animals uh, in there. So, but it's just experience, and you know. And that that is a one, and that's that's another reason why the, I like the aromatic ISO because that's something else that I don't have to think. Yeah. And I'm get more worried about more more of these type of things about backgrounds and what do they do and when to shoot mm -hmm. more than be worried about all these different little technical stuff that I know how they work, but I'm just you know taking the benefits of the, that happens in the camera yeah. to be more focused and, uh, and the different situation and that is happening in front of me. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And this one here, we've got a little, a local hummingbird. Very local. It's only in Costa Rica. This is called the mangrove hummingbird, mangrove hummingbird. And that only lives in the Pacific side of the country and on the mangrove areas. Mm -hmm. And places where have mangroves around, you can see this uh, beautiful guy uh, yeah. uh, or species. Yeah, this is uh, an incident in a, in, a play, in, a, in a plant called uh, opossum tails. They are really, really common in all over the country. People plant those uh, plants to attract hummingbirds in general. Mm -hmm. They're really good for it. Yeah. And in this case, uh, it was a very early morning. So you can see some of the natural little golden lights. Uh, yeah. I mean, yeah, little golden light around. So that's that's really hard to get here again because you need to, you know, we don't have much of the light that at least that it stayed long time enough to find animals and with that light. Yeah. So yeah. That's, uh, I, I really like that shot. Mm. 
And again, just uh, moving a little bit to not have many things behind mm -hmm. the eye. I yeah. tried to as much as possible. You know, I couldn't do anything with the bill, uh, but yeah. at least uh, I live behind the, the head, the eye. I don't have something, you know, that distracts or you made too yeah. much distraction. And so I, I, I that's the show that I, mm -hmm. I like. Yeah, well, it's nicely layered. I, I like the idea. It's, it's layered. I mean, that the hummingbird is, is clear. You see all these vines with different layering and different uh, focus points and and blurriness, you know, in the image. So it's 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 just it's it's a nice, nice, very pleasant image. What I'm looking on on the my other monitor here, it just just it's very very well done. You know, it's just a great shot. You know, so. And again, oh. uh, another. Oh no, yeah, and again uh, for for animal like hummingbirds because they're really active. This one is sitting, right? And yeah. uh, again, having a, this system, I'm not just trying to make everyone try to shoot as I do, but <laughs> it's just the, the you know, like uh, the benefits. For example, I'm shooting this bird at 100, 100 or 500. It's just sitting, right? Yeah. But what happened is just move around. I just move the wheel, the phone wheel, two times, and I will be at 1,500 and maybe one second. Yeah. And the eyes will just boom, quickly yeah. will go up there and I might be able to get, yeah. you know, a shot moving around. At least like uh, the best probably will be like uh, over 2,000 there, the shutter speed. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, you can maybe play with 1,500, yeah. best 3,200. But again, 3,200 shots here even are very ideal, ideals, but the eyes will boom, go super high. So. Yeah. Well, people don't realize, you know, until they get, get into Costa Rica in the jungle, like, how how tough it is to take great photos you know and 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 what you have to be able to do and and do it quickly you know it's uh so um but uh they'll learn very i quickly. found that really challenging there yeah i mean mike even mike and mike's mike's been a photographer for a long time and he found it challenging you know so yeah so. i really did just the different lighting all the time you go this way everything is so different when you turn around yeah the lighting yeah, nothing stands still yeah. for you in there. Everything's yeah. moving. No. The only thing stands still is this guy here. <laughs> <laughs> I think I got What's this from your Instagram sack? page. Yeah, the, the sloth. Yeah, yeah. So this is a. Uh, um, it's not like a quality shot, but it's a very, very, uh, a very interesting behavior about uh, two sloth mating which uh, females are the one that makes the calls. Females are the one that calls the male when they're ready. Okay. So if there's a male around to respond that call, they, they will go where she is and they will start to, to do their thing. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're very which slow moving, which? you know, so. Mike was saying, which is which, do you know? You know, uh, it's good in Costa Rica, it's almost 10 o'clock. PM, so we can see these type of images at this time of the uh, this time of the night. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know about Canada. Yeah, no, 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 for sure. And here, another <laughs> monkeys. And 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 uh, the question I'm going to have for you for for so the audience is is how many different types of monkeys are there down in uh, uh, on the coast around Puerto Jimenez there. Well, in Costa Rica, we have four species of monkeys, and the Osa Peninsula is the only place that you can see all four. Mm -hmm. So this guy, particularly this guy, is uh, is only found. Remember the rainforest that I started to explain you from the the bird, the fire villa rakari, the, the one yeah. that you can. Yeah. Yeah. That one from the same place of the frog as well, and this one, these three animals having the same, are in the same range of territory. Mm -hmm. So these monkeys are dangerous of the extinction because they don't have much habitat. So this is called a Central American squirrel monkey, but mm -hmm. they are only found in the southwest part of the country and the other side of the Panama border. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, can we photograph those at the chocolate farm? Yes, they are. I think they, it's they, awesome they, they, there. Yeah, we have in the trees yeah, there, yeah. I don't remember we see them there, but they could be there. I yeah, think yeah. I think they were at the chocolate farm. And the other question yeah. is, is, what about uh, out towards Montepello? I thought they were somewhere out that way. Oh, yeah, there's a lot of troops in this way. And yeah. actually, in the Osa Peninsula, 
it's interesting because you don't see them in the whole peninsula only um, in like half of the peninsula you will see those guys so yeah, it's very yeah. interesting yeah and this and this 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 other they're very active this monkey is very active it's really hard to, mm -hmm. to have a, a, a good because you know the key is when they find something that they like to eat they will stop and start to eat it and that's when you have your time to get a picture yeah 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 no it's pretty cool a great photo and this one here is a bittern. Yes, sound wow. bittern. This yeah. is a. Uh, this is uh, outside of the peninsula. You probably we can have it here, but I haven't really find it in the peninsula. A friend of mine uh, talked to me about this bird that he saw it like two hours away from here, mm -hmm. and drove to this place. And it was a very very nice adventure because the bird was going away. They like to be in the rivers. Yeah, yeah. So once the bird saw us and it started to move away so what i did is got out of the river and run in the road to be in front of the bird i bite the road so mm -hmm. it was very interesting and at one point i went way way ahead and went back to the river and i saw the bird coming in but in that you know it sounded like a, just like a couple or meter it was a long distance to be in front of the bird and actually i felt and my camera felt too like uh, all of us <laughs> like camera myself but Anyway, we, I got in the water and I saw the bird coming and a bird was coming. So I started to shoot and he flew, the bird flew away from me, but to another area in front. Yeah, and that's yeah. when I arrived and opened his wings. What they do is to try to keep, uh, you know, danger away. They just show their wings like that to resemble being big. Yeah. And yeah. it shows those beautiful, like, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful markings. Really like yeah. Yeah. It's really. like a butterfly. Yeah. 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 Very mm -hmm. cool. Very cool. We've got another guy looking back at us, a little 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 green frog. Yeah, this is uh this one, these frogs are called uh, a glass frog. This was called a yellow stripe a glass frog. This one is this is piece is very, very rare. Uh, another friend I have good friends. Mm -hmm. <laughs> another friend a friend that specializes in frogs. Uh, he took me to this place. Uh, to see this little population of them, but they look uh, they look similar. So in between them, this one are only like this big, really yeah. really small. Small ones uh, again, yeah. I I should I should this one with a, with two lights, with two lights with diffusers, mm -hmm. um, like a square diffusers, uh, and I have a, a helmet to put the lights together, like cross lights, so that way you can get away of the shadows. Yeah, and. Uh, this is with a, to a Tamron 90, 90 millimeters. So that I have a, I have a Tamron for macro. Okay. So with my DA50, so the guy was helping me with uh, to put the light together and was shooting the down. So this is around uh, it's an F11 if okay. I'm not wrong. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, you see how narrow is the depth of field even at F11. So. Oh yeah, no, it's 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 but it's 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 a perfect shot. You know, it just. You, you've got everything that's supposed to be sharp is sharp and 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 uh, you know everything else is, is just nicely blurred and and again it's just a nice color combination you know when you see that so uh. yeah with frogs like that uh, you gotta be uh, you can see that for uh, the frog is you are right in front of the head yeah so when you're in front of the head you just move your f point and top of one eye and focus that eye and that's how you get the two eyes to focus you know that because but you have to be in front of the nose sorry in front of the nose mm -hmm. and then you move your f point to the left or right you just choose an eye and then focus one eye and that's how you get the both sides in focus oh okay okay yeah that's pretty cool this is another great shot you've got here dennis that's uh that's taking advantage of the hard light that we have in this forest mm -hmm. because what happened is uh the forest and the, the, the primary forest only let around 3% of the light that hit the ground, right? Yeah. So uh, that happening, you only see sometimes spots of light that go straight. And that one of those spots of light was hitting this, uh, this is called a white lip hickory. Mm -hmm. And so I was shooting one side, what I did, 
was to right away I knew that I needed to get that, you know, to put the minus exposure and I put it around minus almost three because I had it in matrix, right? Yeah. yeah. I just put it like minus three right away and that's how we just put just just regulate the light into that little shot the little 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 area mm -hmm. that, that's where the, where the light was heated and the rest because there were not much light there were not light around so it just turned on like this so it's pretty cool i really like it so yeah, really, yeah really nice shot hmm. yeah no that's that's a beautiful shot for sure uh, uh. but something that you have to you have to really think about that because what happened is if you only have one light of spot if you shoot a matrix way Mm -hmm. The camera will think that you will. The camera will give you a lot of light, and you will burn those places that want to have light. Yeah. Because the rest is darker. Yeah. So you always right away when you see that the some of the some of the pieces of light hit one a specific area of animal, and the rest is darker. Mm -hmm. You have to put like minus right away minus an exposure because yeah. you, the camera will put that you will burn out this. Yeah. Place, oh yeah. No, area. for sure. Yeah. How large is that animal? Like how long, how big do they get? Uh, that, uh, it's like a, it's like bigger than a domestic. It's almost like a domestic pig, big, big one. Okay. So it could be like a, a 50, 50, 50, 60 uh, kilos. Yeah. Okay. That's, okay. that's fair right. size. That'd be, that'd be like a large dog, you know? So to, yeah. The, these, yeah, these, these animals are really like critically in danger of extinction. Hmm. This is called a, a light white lip pectoris. They can be in groups up to uh, 100, 200 individuals. Okay. And sure seems to be a lot of animals of, in yeah. extinction. One, this is one, one of the coolest animals to see. They're really, really smart. And these animals, when they smell you, they can measure a smell for distance. Yeah. And they can make a big noise, big time noise. Like yeah. you can really be scared like with all, because they can all the male like make talk, 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 talk. Yeah. Noise is like crazy, mm -hmm. and you think that you're gonna die because yeah. they, if they guys, if those guys come to you, you have to climb trees oh. because those guys they can kill people. Yeah. Oh wow. Not like wow. they are not really aggressive like that. But they just being protected into yeah. the small yeah. ones, the small ones. Now, were these hunted for for food, Dennis? No, no. These guys they eat everything that they can find on the ground. Yeah. Or okay. they eat uh, roots, they eat yeah. uh, uh, invertebrates, they eat, uh, you know, fruits. Their, their diets is everything that's in the ground. They mm -hmm. can from mm -hmm. oh, have yeah. an amazing nose. Yeah. 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 Amazing. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Then here we've got uh, another one. Then this one, if I remember, I think is this was down around the Serpe River, wasn't it? We did. Yeah. We did it that. I did that with you. Yes. Yeah. I don't yeah. Remember. This was with us in there, and and you remember when when there we were following these guys along the treetops. They were they were wanting to come down and, and have a drink of water, and uh, so they were all coming yeah. coming down. And uh, for the people just watching this, uh, these guys come down and they dip their tail in the water and then and they drink the water off their tail. <laughs> yeah, monkeys are monkeys are like people. Uh, you know, everyone's. Uh, a lot of people say the same, but in this case, what I'm what I'm meaning is that, for example, white-faced monkey in areas where they are they don't have rivers nearby, they will not do that. They mm -hmm. don't need to. They probably found different ways to get the water from. Yeah. This one, they near they live they live next to a river, so they found that uh, that is easier for them, and just go down quick, go up, and they just suck the water from these body parts. Yeah. And yeah. that's how they can water and cool off at the same time. That's what we did in that river area. Mm -hmm. so yeah, is that the ones that have the crocodiles in it? Yeah. Yes. Yes. This yeah. Is okay, that's area. what I thought. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was pretty cool. That's a, no, that's a great photo. You know, just uh, again, it's just, you know, the way he's kind of looking back over his shoulder at us, you know, it, uh, yeah, nice shot. And, and I think and that, that and that and that and that and that movement only uh, the monkey did it in only like a five to ten seconds. Okay. You know, that's why you got you gotta be quick in your settings here because the monkey just went down and then goes up. Yeah. So I was lucky that the, they had a good shutter speed too because that mm -hmm. movement between being in the water and out. Uh, so I got really lucky and that's uh it's not cropped. So that's really really nice photo. I, yeah. And I really like.
that's one of my favorite um, white face mask. Photos. Yeah, no, it is a, it is a, yeah, I do. I, it's one of my f favorites of yours also. Uh, it's just a great shot, mm -hmm. you know. So, it, uh, but that was that was all the photos we've had, uh, Dennis. Uh, you know that uh, we talk about it, and I know. You're like you say it's it's ten o'clock down in Costa Rica, and, and I did not realize that there's such a time difference. I thought you were on the same time zone as Pacific Standard out that we have on the coast here. I didn't realize you're so late. So we're we really. I thought it was a one hour difference. Yeah, we really appreciate you, you know, talking to us and 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 telling us, you know, the, your stories about your photos and and uh, uh, your your. Uh, knowledge is is just uh, amazing you know how you keep everything up there and and uh, you know being a naturalist and and i know you helped uh, crocodile bay with their their plants you know and i think that's an ongoing scenario out there putting all the the kind of domestic plants back in uh to attract the animals and and things in there so uh it, it, it is pretty nice you know that you're doing all that so um and i encourage anybody to to uh get uh, look at Dennis's. Uh, I'm just going to see if I can quickly get on to Dennis here. Um, show because you've got your Instagram account, um, and I want to see if I can uh, bring it up oh, here. Some, some here. Thanks yeah. to you for the invitation. This is fun. I should do this more often. <laughs> yeah, you know, it. I mean, anytime, you know, you're welcome. Uh, <clears throat> we're going to have this every Tuesday, Dennis, is what we're planning okay. to do, you know, to, to come back and, and, um, I'm just trying to get the screens changed here a little bit and then get my uh, another screen up here um, for your uh, Instagram. I want to show Instagram here for you. Just a sec. Um, Thank you, Dave. You, you guys talk you amongst yourselves there for a second there and uh, I'll rough. just, yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, here it is, yeah. So uh, on this one, I'm just going to go to another screen, and, and there it is there. So if anybody's um, just have a quick, oh, man, it just nothing's working to, I didn't have this set up. But OSA oh. Photography uh, for Dennis has got an Instagram. Have a look at, at it, and if you're not following him, follow him. He's got some amazing photos uh, on there that uh, you can have a look through. And, uh, you know, it's just um, just incredible, just incredible stuff that uh, you can learn a lot from Dennis. As you know, Dennis, he's just full of information. You know, he, he's... I he got one question if I can. Yeah. Yeah, I can see the pictures because I checked his Instagram be before we went online. And uh, I would like to ask him how he, if he's got any good tips, how he's looking for a hummingbird's nest. Because I know they are very small and they are very hard to find. Yeah. So if he's got some nice tips, like how to find them. Uh, yeah, no, that that was really hard to find too. It's funny that you you asked or mentioned that because I did a, a bike ride with my mother at, at this last Sunday, and as I was moving out, I saw two hummingbird nests. And uh, from uh, one species called a uh, uh, purple uh, golden throated, um, it's a very beautiful hummingbird. And it just uh, this time of the year, they are nesting. There are more nests at this time of the year of the birds in general. Hummingbirds can nest all year round, but this is a high high peak of them. So it also depends on what time you're coming, and you gotta just move it slow. The different vegetation. They don't. They don't make their nest too high. They are really not too high. They're okay. like a, maybe like a eye level more or less. Okay, so that's and what we should be so looking for. Just, so you just yeah, you just move it slow, depending on the area, the bushy area. They usually, uh, you know, put it like under leaves, like kind of like close it in there. But if you hear a hummingbird that is like a leaving when you pass nearby them, it might be a nest there. You know, usually there are flowers around. Yeah. Or feeding, right? But if you're walking and you are not seeing the nest, but mm -hmm. if you see like uh, something, the hummingbird just flying away, if you don't see there are flowers around, so like mm -hmm. they were feeding, that's because there's a nest there somewhere. Yeah, so you yeah. gotta wait, wait, because usually what they do, is when you're too close that you don't know, they just fly away, right? Because they wanna, you know, kind of like a take, take you away from the nest. 
So what you do is keep away from that place and wait, and you will see the hummingbird at one point will return to the nest, mm -hmm. and then you can locate yeah, that's, it. <clears throat> that's what I found as well here, because usually what they do, they fly different direction, they don't fly directly to nest, so they would like to, they don't want to show the nest straight away when they see you, you are there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think uh, I think the key is mostly like uh, walking through, and then just oh. make sure that if you pass through, one of them is in the nest, and you will see him go anyway. Mm -hmm. You know that how you can try to try to get him because if you're just in one area, watching them from far, it will be even harder. So you gotta it's more like a moving yourself, move a lot more move more around yeah. to try to you know make one moving away as you're close to the nest. That more watching them around so mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. i've noticed when they come back to the nest to, to feed they seem to come back in, in increments they seem to fly around a little bit then they stop on a branch behind and then they kind of move in a little closer i guess to see what's around and then they finally come back and then they do their feeding yeah like i had a i had a picture uh, like three or four weeks ago from one that it was uh in my, my grandparents place and uh, that hummingbird did something like that, but I had to wait for one hour, uh, be in intervals around one hour, because uh, the hummingbird didn't want to be there nearby them. So you gotta be there, not too close, and the first try, and let you know, like the hummingbird kind of like know that you're not really doing nothing wrong. But it depends. If you're too close to the hummingbird, they will not come back. Yeah. You need to be kind of far away. Even you know where it is. You have to be away from them because they're trying to, you know, trying to keep any anyone any danger away. So if you're kind of close, they will react different than if you are far away. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's uh, it's true. Yeah. So that that makes sense. You know, I, I think if I remember, all the nests I've seen has always been almost eye level. You know, and and they're usually put them under a leaf or something. So it, uh, so that's a, that's a good thing to to watch for. Now, Dennis, um, I'm not sure if you noticed, but uh, uh, Mike has a little store behind him there, and he and he said to me at the start of this that you can choose anything off his lenses on the back of a, the shelf there. <laughs> he's got yeah. He said anything for Dennis, you know, and just you such you enjoyed you so oh much. My God. Just, any lens you want is just let let him know. What about the rest of us? What about the rest of us? <laughs> <laughs> We're on our own. I can give you I can give you one good tip. Don't choose anything from the boxes because the boxes on his left hand side are empty. Eh? So <laughs> that's only what is behind him. <laughs> yeah. I got a shelf full of boxes there. Yeah. Yeah, take the big one. Take the big lens, yeah. I, you know. I, didn't, I didn't get anything from Christmas, so that would oh, be nice for me. There guys. we go. That would be nice. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Now, I have one more question for you, Dennis. You've, you've taken out about thousands of, of people out on, on tours and stuff. Uh, was there anything kind of a head-slapping moment that they, questions that these dumbest questions that they ask you? Like what, you know, like what, uh, yeah. Oh, really? Like, uh, let me think about that. From photography or for any type of subject? Yeah, for photography people. Yeah, I mean, you've taken so many people. Uh -huh. There's got to be something that, you know, like, people ask you and you say, oh, gosh, you know, like, that's, that's a crazy question or something, you know, like, anything like that, you know, kind of stand out to you? Well, I think the more, the, the more, the more, I think it was kind of like a stupid thing that I saw from one photographer. I will say like that, it was just a person that tried to move the head from a viper oh. to relocate to relocate <laughs> the photographer I... trying to relocate the viper head from oh. one side to the other one. Oh wow yeah wow. Was, and uh yeah and uh, i think the person did it once like a kind of like a move like with their finger behind and then he was throwing again and then i i saw it in the second time like what are you doing oh no it's because there is a there's a stick behind, so it's just moving the head a bit to the left. Oh, oh my, my God. God. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah man, people. Man. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I guess it's it's a similar thing to us here in Yellowstone. There is some some family was trying to put their kid up on top of a bison. They're walking up. They're going to put the because they you know there's so many bisons walking around the side of the road. They think oh they're so tame. They were going to put the kid on the back to go take it for a ride. You know, like I mean, give your head a shake. You know, these are 
wild animals, you know. It, uh, but yeah, yeah. yeah you can hear those bison animals. breathe. You're too close. Yeah, yeah. Really. And uh, I just I would like to ask Dennis. Sorry. Uh, with the travel, how is the resort now? And uh, you know, with all those COVID situation, how is still tourists coming, or they are still okay to fly to Costa Rica? I didn't get that. My the, the audio was a little bit cut off for me. He was he was asking about uh, with the COVID uh, the situation for Costa Rica. Are still tourists still coming? <clears throat> yeah, no. Um, it's I think it's very different depending on the country, and but we do we do have uh, more tourists in the last uh, three weeks than we actually did have before. So it's getting better, and the tourists, at least in the la the last two weeks, is 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 going up, is going up. So it's it's, it's not the same, of course, but but it's also di it's different for different countries. Mm -hmm. The food is sure great there. Yeah, yeah, no, it's it, uh, it's yeah, it's great. Hey, Dennis, listen, I, I really would like to have you back again another time. Uh, we're gonna definitely, you know. I don't want to hold you up anymore because it's getting past your bedtime. <laughs> Tommy, I know, and, and you got to get I'm home not, in the dark. It's yeah, the, it's always the same face. I, I, you will not, my face, you will not be changing. Yeah, if yeah. We, if, even if we do that at noon, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's uh, I, I appreciate it. Thank you very much for coming, and uh, we will definitely, you know, look forward to to meeting and coming down again and seeing seeing the group. And uh, please say hi to everybody down there. And, and uh, um, it's just, it was, we totally enjoyed our time. And uh, your crew that came out with us, took us out and, and uh, helped us along the way with the workshop people. Um, it's just, uh, yeah, it's just unbelievable, Excellent. you know. And I know Larry, you know, he was, you know, he, uh, he was in, out there, he was saying, Frank, when are we going to Costa Rica again? So, you know, he's, <laughs> he's itching to go. Soon as the borders are open, you know he wants to to head down again. So, to, uh, so we will be, you know, putting together another group to come down and and uh, spend time with you. And uh, in the meantime, if you need anything, let us know. Uh, we'll glad to help you out with uh, whatever you might need. We'll forward it, send it down to you. You know, um, I've got a big box. I'm going to take that lens in the back there for you. We'll we'll ship it. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you, Dennis. Oh, is there your, your 600 time. millimeter, Frank? Yeah. You know, yeah, you know, yeah. Next time, Larry will be in the bathroom making the video call. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> um, is there any other questions anybody has before we let Dennis go and and uh, yeah, out in the audience? Dennis, yeah. You're gonna have to come to Yellowstone one year. Yeah. In winter time, I when it's cold. Oh yeah. You gotta get you out of that warm climate. Yeah. Definitely. I'm looking for it. That's that's uh, that's uh, my bucket list. Yeah. There, so wow, I, you you're gonna love it up there too. Yeah, yeah. We would we'd have a oh, great yeah. time. You, yeah. You great beautiful. Time. Mm. All right, guys. Uh, okay, guys. Uh, thank you. To, thank you very much, your, Dennis. And... See you. Thank you. Thanks, Dennis. And, uh, nice ciao for you. now. Yeah. Bye. Take care, buddy. Yeah. Bye, bye. Yeah. Okay, we'll get Dennis out and uh, off. So anyway, okay, guys. So uh, that was a, a, a great uh, opportunity to talk with Dennis again. Nice to see him. Um, thanks for you know coming along, and people out in the crowd. Uh, Karen, thanks for coming and uh, listening. Dave, thank you for coming along. Uh, I, were you having problems logging in? I saw something. I do have that link out there, but uh, if you wanted to to give it a quick try um, and just see, I'll put you on number one spot there if you're still out there watching. Uh, just give Hi, it a Wayne. Quick, yeah. Hey, how are you, Mike? Good. I understand you bought some new equipment. Oh, not me. <laughs> not me. <laughs> Wrong information, eh, again. <laughs> oh. Mike, your yeah. audio is much better now and your, your, uh, your uh, video as well. Yeah, I finally got things going. It was very simple, wasn't it, Frank? Yeah, I mean, it, he only spent two days trying to, to make it a go. Yeah. I'll tell you when I next time I see you, Rob. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, I just sent that up again, uh, Dave. I don't know if you want to try that last link. I don't know why you're having problems logging in, but I mean, you, you were able to get in the other day. But uh, anyway, um, you know, give it a go. But uh, so anyway, guys, um, that's what we have for the show to, tonight. Um, I did have uh, some photos that came from a, a viewer. Um, I think what we'll have to do is we're going to leave it for another time uh, to, to critique them because it's getting quite late and, and uh, you know, so, to, uh, but we'll maybe just have a, a critique night of, of photos. I have them aside uh, and we'll save them. Um, and and mom has gone detecting. She was the one that sent it to us. So, um, uh, again, yeah, H hello, uh, Brenda, yeah. So what we're going to do is I'm, I'm saving your photos. I, I have them. It's just we're running out of time here to to critique them we will bring them in for next time we're going to make time to do the photos and uh, uh, and then talk about them but uh, yeah so but that was it I mean I think I think it was great I mean there's a great wealth of information from that Dennis uh, as you can see he's he's just full of information about anything you ask him about what it is he knows what it is so um, and that's what uh, makes a great guide you know to be to, yeah, to when we took that trip, Frank, he was extremely knowledgeable. I could yeah. not believe it, how yeah. much he knows yeah. Yeah. about every plant and every bird. And yeah. yeah, I mean, I guess that that's being a naturalist, you know, and, and uh, so he's, he, does, he does know his plants, he does know his animals, and uh, what I'm always amazed at is, is, is he can pick him up in a distance. I mean, you know, it's like half a mile down the road, he knows, <laughs> you know, what's up in the tree, you know, and uh, so again... It's just, oh, hey, Carol, are you still here? Um, if you want to try the link, maybe come in. I didn't realize you're still here. There's a link on there for the eCam. Try the link and come on in and say hi to us. Don't don't run away. Don't go away. Just try the link and and uh, say hi. You know, well, good to see you. I'm glad that uh, Carol made it, you know, so it, uh, um, she was another one of the workshop people. North Shore Photo Club, you know, and uh, so it was kind of nice, yeah. But yeah, so Robert, you're gonna have to try that auto ISO. I mean, I think if you ever get down in Costa Rica and in the jungles there, you will realize like how difficult it is to to make a photo. Uh, not not really because I'm I'm used to the shoot home manual. I'm really fast of changing the aperture, and oh. I'm doing the on the wedding day as well. Yeah. So I don't I I I I prefer to be in full control. Yeah, yeah. I like Daniel too. You have time too. to redo it. Wedding, you have time to redo a shot if you can screw it up. These guys don't wait around for you. They're gone. You know, so if you don't get the shot. It's 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 gone. You know, so I usually use different technique, Frank. Uh, I usually set my aperture and shutter speed and ISO before I go to the situation, and after it's just easy to do small changes. Mm -hmm. I just don't really like the auto ISO because uh, it's uh, it's changing for <clears throat> for me, and uh, it's, sometimes it makes change what I don't really like. But it. it it wouldn't change, you know, anything, you know, I saw it just, it, you, you, you set, you set your minimum maximums in there. And it only it, goes I in, know, the, in that, uh, yeah, so, yeah. I know how it goes, but uh, yeah. Yeah. as I say, I like to be in full control. Mm -hmm. Okay, guys, anyway, uh, anything else to add before we hang up and say good night? Yes, yes, manual control, it's great. Manual control, yeah, nice to see you, nice to hear you, Mike. And, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's great, yeah, yeah. And Thanks Wayne, for you helping were quiet there, tonight. Right? You were quiet. Well, <laughs> everybody else was talking. Oh, okay. It, it's good. Yeah, yeah. no, good, uh, good to see everybody. And, uh, you know, uh, what's on uh, for next week? Next week we have Dave, believe it or okay. not. Yeah, he's going to be on, and, and uh, we've got uh, him and... Uh, and then hopefully we'll make some time to, to uh, go through, do some critiquing with some photos. Um, if anybody else is going to send anything else in for us, we'll, we'll go through them. But uh, it was nice to see the, uh, the group of people come out and, and uh, you know, um, and I hope everybody enjoyed it, you know. So, but yeah, very much. Yeah, that's where we are. So Good. we'll let everybody go. I'll wind it down and thank you all for coming.
Do thumbs up. Good and night. ciao for now. See you guys. Talk to you later. Take care, Wayne. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Talk to you later. See you, Mike. See you, Ryan. See you, Wayne. Bye-bye. <laughs>